How you doing guys and gals? This is Doug Wilson from Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors. It's not every day that a guy like me finds a knife builder that he really gets along with well, who builds a phenomenal knife and is just a, a plain joy to work with and that is Mike Wallace from Wallace Edged Tools. Mike has been extremely generous to me so I consider him a brother in knives so I don't have any problem showcasing a bunch of his knives in a video. So if you guys stay tuned I'm going to showcase and show you some of Mike Wallace's utilitarian blades. Stay tuned. Okay guys, thanks for coming back, not getting lost. <laughs> Real quick, I have a client, his name is Mike Cervini. He's been a very good client over the last couple of years. I just finished a sheath system for him, for his Topps Bracamo. And I just wanna show this to him, and you guys as well. Uh, so basically we got a tabby dangler. I got some tooling work on this. You see that there's a hawk head there and I got Y and H over here for yellow hawk. I don't know if you guys can see that But there's some tooling in in the leather loop This is oil and wax impregnated nine ounce uh, Sherman Oaks leather really good stuff uh, tabby dangler shore up plate Extremely strong the tabby danglers I Came up with the tabby dangler so that I could actually put a tech lock and a molly lock on on the uh, system as well So it works out real good. So Mike wanted a hawk light assembly on this and He wanted to be able to use it in dangler style so while it's on his hip he can tilt this thing anywhere he wants. Face mount ferro rod. Baldrick system carry. So you got a D-ring here that, uh, you know, a lot of guys put the D-ring down here for Baldrick carry and the, the weight of the knife, the handle, ends up drooping and it, you can't carry it right. So I figured out a way to get that thing all the way up there and be like a dual purpose thing as well. The tabby dangler ring is the top baldric ring. Here's the one at the tip. I've moved to smaller rings that I can just about get on there. Tech lock on the back. 800 grit diamond hone. Nice, turned out real good. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm out here in my Crocs and I'm getting bit up by mosquitoes. This is one reason I don't like going out in the summer. Bugs. I've had enough of bugs. When I was in the military, the bane of my existence. You're in a hide site, you know, and you're all hunkered down and you got spiders and mosquitoes and you're like whack, 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 whack. Yeah, right. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. I'm just going to show you a bunch of Mike Wallace knives. This is the Delta Whiskey Backcountry. Everybody knows where it comes from. I'm just going to show you these blades. CPM 3V. It's got a 6 inch blade, probably a 5.5 inch cutting surface. Continuous sweeping belly, choke up choil. 
I, I tell you, I really like Mike's knives because he knows how to build a beautiful, tough, usable knife. All the features that you find on his knives are utilitarian. There's a reason for them. Uh, I've seen a lot of knife designers, a lot of knife builders design features into knives that just look cool, but they don't do anything. There's a lot of that going on in the industry. <clears throat> Mike's not like that. I mean, he even said it to me several times. Doug, if the, uh, what did he tell me? If, if the feature of the knife does not have a specific purpose, I won't put it on there. So, there you go. Delta Whiskey Backcountry. This is my personal blade. That's the sheath that I built for it. I'm starting to lose light again. I gotta time my videos better. There's that one. There's another Delta Whiskey Backcountry. I'm getting ready to throw a sheath on. I got about 10 of his knives in the basement right now. I'm real skittish about bringing them outside because they're not mine. I didn't get permission from the other clients to do it. These clients I know will allow me to do it. This one is uh, Dan Avasio's. It's got that textured jig handle. This is his prettiest handle, I think. There. This is the Spear One. These, these are pretty much my personal blades. These were all gifted to me by Mike Wallace. Extremely utilitarian. You see that cant in the blade? That's so you get a lot of good leverage with this knife, specifically in chopping. Other areas as well, but specifically if you want to chop with this knife, It'll do some light chopping. So, and that can't, see how it's turned there at like a 20 degree angle or whatever? So that's the spear one, clip point, drop point. Continuous sweep on the belly. And this is the, this is the sheath that I have for you. This is my personal sheath. It's got my... I used to wear this one on my beret. I took it off and put it on a sheath. This is the uh, Special Forces Crest. So, this is this is where you can see De Oppresso Liber. See it there? Means freedom of the oppressed. If you were ever wondering why I put it at the end of a lot of my posts, that's the reason. That is the motto of Special Forces. De Oppresso Liber. Freedom of the oppressed, or, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, this is a Spear 2. Spear 2. These are all CPM 3V. Super Steel. I mean, when he does it, he does it right. He's not a forger. He's not an anvil pounder. He uses crucible powdered metals to produce... Extremely tough, reliable, durable, utilitarian blades. I put, I tell you, I put all these knives through hell. And I'm just thoroughly impressed with them. Now, like I said, I'm of the firm belief that it's not so much the grind of the knife that makes it efficient. It's the edge that you put on it. So, it's the edge that you put on it that gives you that cutting ability and, you know, whether you're able to do feather sticks with it or not, notching with it or not, scraping bark with it or not, uh, you know, cutting rope with it or not, whether you're able to get a, a hair popping edge on it or not, depends on the edge that you put on it, the very edge grind. The grind of the knife, yes, yes, it does matter somewhat. But, you know, that, that only depends on whether you can make that edge a little thinner or thicker, depending on the edge grind of the knife. 
This is a semi-convex grind on this one, and I got my low-shouldered convex edge on it. There's that. That's the Spear 2. This is the LMF-1. This is a design by myself and Mike Wallace. He helped me redesign the LMF-1. This is the new LMF-1 made from CPM3V. The BMF-2, he still hasn't gotten one to me yet. He said that he would. I'm waiting for it. Um, remember it got stolen out of the mail. It went to some, uh, a neighbor's house and they said they don't have it and all that other kind of crap. So anyway, I only have the LMF-1 right now. Mike is getting ready to put these on his website as well. It used to be you could only order them through me. Well, I've asked him to put them on his website as, as well because I don't have quite the marketing ability that his website does. So he's going to put them on there, the BMF-2 in CPM-3V and the LMF-1, this one here, in CPM-3V. I love continuous curves on the blade it's just for me that's a more efficient blade geometry for me okay there's that one got this one here which is a custom work uh, custom piece that Mike Wallace did for Rick Ruckstall he took a tops bushcrafter kukri 7.0 and put his handle scales on it his handle configuration now it's extremely comfortable got good length to it good chopping ability uh, I have not put this particular knife through its paces or any other like this you know this model so I don't know how it it, 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 it would work out I don't I just don't know the knife so I'm not going to comment on it but Rick wanted uh, Mike to put his handle on it and his handle geometry because it, it's comfortable. It's comfortable, it's tough, it's pretty, you know. All right, guys, that's just a short video uh, showcasing some of Mike Wallace's knives. And you can get a hold of him at wallaceedgedtools.com. www.wallaceedgedtools.com tools.com uh, and check out his website he's uh, he's one of those builders that only comes along every once in a while he's extraordinary extraordinary okay so I moved inside uh, it was getting dark so I want to finish the rest of these so I'm just gonna show them over again uh, the Mike Wallace knives so I'm just going to start on the left. Oh, the first thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out to the Preppers Bunker, Jacob Peterson. He was nice enough to mention Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors in his last video. So I'm returning the favor. Thank you, Jacob Peterson at the Preppers Bunker for the t-shirt, brother. Okay. I'm just going to show them all over again. Here's one here. This is uh, this one's for David Houseworth. Now the reason why I'm mentioning who owns the knife on the video is because if you have not gotten with me yet to tell me what you want for a sheath system for your knife. This is proof positive that I, ha I have your knife now from Mike Wallace. So if you want to contact me, we'll work on getting a sheath system <clears throat> ordered for you so we can get them built. Okay. David Houseworth. This is uh, Delta Whiskey Backcountry. Designed by myself. Made by Mike Wallace at Wallace Edge Tools. Mike refined the handle on the Delta Whiskey Backcountry to make it more comfortable. And I think he did a great job. You know, all the, uh, 
all the edges are rounded very comfortable nice palm swell there we go Delta whiskey backcountry CPM 3V now CPM 3V is quite a bit more expensive than say forgeable steels like 01 1095 whatnot just letting you know that this is a field mouse for Edward Rivera Edward Rivera there's the field mouse you can see all these designs on Mike Wallace's website he's got a plethora of handle scale colors he can do them in micarta or G10 he prefers to work with G10 but he, he will do them in my carta. So that's the field mouse. Black scales. That one back. Here's another Delta Whiskey backcountry. This one belongs to Enrico Tanko. Enrico Tanko. And Enrico, if you're watching this video, I did receive the box of, I don't know, what is it, 10 knives or so that I have to put sheath systems on. So the box is here. The order did arrive safely. Just letting you know that so you know they're here and safe. So when you're ready, we can talk about sheath systems for all those knives. The, the scales on this are like a, uh, uh, an off-white, like a uh, light gray color. Here's another Spear 2. I showed you uh, one of these before. This one has like coyote brown, tan handles. I tell you, I, I like this Spear 2. This, this thing's a beast. It's got a choke-up choil. And I, I tell you, I love choke-up choils. And you can see how he camphors his choils. Not a lot of guys do that, guys. Not a lot of knife makers, knife builders. Even I've even noticed even really good knife makers don't do this most of the time. He camphors his edges. So that when you put your finger in that finger choil, there is no discomfort whatsoever. None at all. And he not only camphors them on the sides, he polishes the whole thing. That's a lot of work, especially with CPM 3V, because it is very difficult to grind. When, when, when uh, knife builders get a slab of CPM 3V, it generally comes with uh, scale on it. And they the first thing they have to do is grind all that scale off. That's, a, that's an expensive process. And they have to grind that scale off before they ever cut a knife before they ever begin to do anything with it. So it's very difficult to work with. So I give the guys who work with it props. Uh, that one is for Edward Ruth. Edward Ruth. Spear 2. Alright. This one is... I think I... No, I didn't show this one yet. Here's another field mouse for Enrico Tango. I got a lot of sheaths going to this this guy. I, got, I have a lot of your knives, Enrico. So we, we got to get going here. Tell me what you need for these sheath systems. This is a field mouse. I like this one. I think this one's going to be my next Mike Wallace knife. You can see the blade. I think this would be great for a necker. Absolutely. I mean, the necker that I have on right now... This is a uh, an Anza, Anza, but you can see the handles are comparable on these two. I like Necker's smaller knives that have substantial, comfortable handles because you know everybody knows that the leverage you're going to get on that blade is directly proportional to the size and geometry of that handle. You know the length of it. So there's a field mouse. I think this is going to be my next one from Mike Wallace. 
This is probably CPM 154. Let me see. Yes. CPM 154. This is the stainless version of CPM 3V. There's that. Another Delta Whiskey Backcountry in the textured jig pattern. Oh, it looks like OD green and black G10 with orange liners. This one goes to Enrico Tango. <laughs> Enrico Tango. It's T A N G C O. Tango, I guess you would say. CPM 3V. Delta Whiskey Backcountry. I'll show these again. I know I already showed them. This one belongs to uh, David Adavasio. So I've already talked to Dave, I believe. And this is the custom scale work that Mike did for uh, Rick Ruckstall on his Bushcrafter Kukri 7.0 from Tops. There it is. Beautiful. He did a beautiful job on this. This thing is really comfortable. Uh, I just I can't get over how 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 much attention to detail Mike Wallace puts into his uh, blades. Just I just can't. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. No, that's it. I want to show one more here. This is the. first version of my BMF2 knife. I've got about, I don't know, 10 of these left or so. This one's sold. And I'm on the fence on whether I'm going to have any more made. I'm really on the fence with it. Because guys like this, I put it in a sheath and I offer it as a system lower than other companies are selling just the knife for. Now I'm not saying that this is a battle horse or this is an LT Wright or this is a Mike Wall. It's not. But it is a well built, no frills, tough ass bushcrafter. If you saw my video of me pounding this thing into concrete, yeah I did. Didn't hurt it. <laughs> so I've set the rock well a little lower on these so that there's much less chance that you're going to snap this blade in, under extreme use. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm out there in the bush, if I need to use my knife in an extreme use scenario, I'm going to do it. If it's, you know, the difference between life and death or food and not food, I'm going to do it. And I need a knife that's going to, you know, last, that's going to come through that. So. This is the BMF2. This is the one with the black micarta scales. 316 inch 01 tool steel. Okay. I think that's it. Alright guys. That's the end of this video. This is Doug Wilson. BLL Customs. I've just shown you a plethora of Mike Wallace knives. I tell you, he's really good. So you might want to think about checking them out at least check them out his attention to detail is off the charts i'll see you on the next video thank you